The Legacy of Shinzo Abe Former Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe was assassinated by an assailant with a homemade gun on Friday, July 8th, leaving the world in a state of shock and mourning. On Friday, July 8th, former Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe was assassinated during a campaign rally. Abe's death has sent shockwaves throughout the entire world, especially considering the fact that Japan is a country known for its low percentage of violence. I'd a main temple in Tokyo, to pay final respects to former Prime Minister Shinzo Abe. He was Japan is a country with a population of around 127 million people. Despite the large number of people that live in Japan, rarely does the number of gun deaths exceed more than 10 people yearly. Ian Overton, the executive director of the group Action on Armed Violence, describes this effective gun regulation within Japan by stating, Ever since guns entered the country, Japan has always had strict gun laws. They are the first nation to impose gun laws in the whole world, and I think it laid down a bedrock saying that guns really don't play a part in civilian society. Even with Japan's strict regulation on guns, Abe's would-be assassin was still able to create a homemade version of a firearm. During the ex-Prime Minister's speech, the assailant fired two shots, one of which would end up being the fatal blow that cut Abe's life short. With much of the world mourning the loss of Shinzo Abe, questions regarding the significance of his legacy have been raised. Despite many world leaders praising Abe and work he has done not only for the nation of Japan but for the world as well, contrastingly, there are numerous other news sources highlighting the controversy of Abe's character and the problems that have arisen as a result of his leadership. Former Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe has been assassinated. Last Friday, ex-Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe was assassinated. Former Prime Minister Shinzo Abe has died in the hospital after being shot at a campaign event in a nation where... Security tackled the suspected gunman at the scene of an attack, and he was arrested by police. The shooting shocked many in Japan, which is one of the world's safest nations and has some of the strictest gun control laws anywhere. The suspected assailant... Tetsuya Yamagami, a 41-year-old man, fired upon Abe in the city of Nara, where the former prime minister was speaking during a political rally. Shinzo Abe was a monumental figure to the nation of Japan and to the entire world. President Biden, as well as a number of other national leaders, have come out to denounce the senseless execution of Abe and to describe the man as an invigorated and enthusiastic proponent of national pride, who supported increased levels of freedom and democracy within Japan. Even Russian dictator Vladimir Putin denoted Abe as an outstanding statesman. Abe was undoubtedly a significant figure and leader credited with transforming the world's perception of Japan following the history of World War II. Abe's grandfather, Nabasuke Kishi, Japan's prime minister in 1957, served as a model of inspiration for Shinzo Abe, and he aspired to carry on his grandfather's legacy. America. Arriving in Washington for top-level talks on trade and defense, Mr. Kishi, the Japanese prime minister... Based on the vast number of achievements that Abe was able to accomplish in his time on this earth, it is quite evident the extent to which Abe attempted to improve the stature of Japan on a global platform. Upon further research, his decisions as a leader have not always been correct, or even justifiable, but this does not mean by any standards that Abe was deserving of anything less than the respect that he was entitled as a former world leader. Still more women to walk, while lessening the burden women's shoulder. Why has ex-Japanese PM Abe been assassinated? With an individual going through such extreme lengths as building and designing their own gun in order to assassinate the former Prime Minister Shinzo Abe, it draws the question of what reasoning a person might have which could lead them to commit such a heinous and horrific atrocity. Based on recent information that has been gathered by law enforcement and their questioning of the assailant, as well as his extended family, the assassin's reasoning has essentially boiled down to a personal vendetta that can be directly attributed to Abe. 
The assassin's mother was said to have donated her entire life savings, as well as that of her families, to a religious group that is said to have strong ties with the former prime minister. According to interviews with the police, Yamagami first developed his grudge against the church when his mother went bankrupt about 20 years ago. He would wander around the neighborhood where the church was holding meetings with a knife, aiming to kill Hak Ja Han, who was the wife of the church's late religious leader, Sun Young Moon. He was apparently motivated to kill Abe after watching a video message sent by Abe to an affiliate of the Unification Church. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, Unification Church leaders were not coming to Japan, and I was unable to travel to South Korea, Yamagami said of the reason behind changing his target to Abe from officials of the group. Despite whatever harm the Unification Church may have instigated with its heavily encouraged and reinforced request for donations from its members, which left Yamagami's family poverty-stricken, his decision to take the life of Abe's reflects the instability and vengeful character of his person. It was reported that he had been planning an attack for around 20 years, so regardless of the inspiration behind his motivations, Yamagami clearly had the undeniable intention of causing death and destruction. Remembrance of the profound legacy of Shinzo Abe. To address your joint session, I extend my... Following the assassination of Shinzo Abe, many are looking back to assess and evaluate the significance of his leadership and legacy. While countless nations and their leaders have all immediately addressed their profound sadness upon learning the news of his murder and attempting to elaborate upon the consequence of his life, there are others who aim to reveal the true nature of Abe's position as Japan's former prime minister. Journalist Lisa Torio highlights the dynamic of the relationship between the U.S. and Abe while he was serving as Japan's PM by stating, in his statement on Abe's assassination, U.S. President Joe Biden called Abe a champion of the alliance between Japan and the United States, stating that Abe cared deeply about the Japanese people and dedicated his life to their service. Even at the moment he was attacked, he was engaged in the work of democracy. Torio then continues on to criticize these commending words by the U.S. president by describing the falsehoods of his speech. She states, We could attribute this kind of whitewashing to the general ignorance shared by politicians and commentators about what goes on domestically in countries outside their own. Shinzo Abe is remembered as a proponent of democracy and a friend precisely because he fell in line with this vision. But what Biden and others call democracy comes at the cost of crushing any real chance at democracy for people at home. Despite the fact that many have described Abe's legacy with fondness and a sense of loss, Torio underlines the complications that coincide with the true nature of life. Shinzo Abe truly may not have been a moral leader, tasked with the personal burden of helping everyone. It would seem through his violent death that there are people in the world that resent his former position and authority. Though for those who continue to praise his legacy, their ignorant and unresearched claims reveal more about them than they could ever possibly realize.